come to St. Thomas this morning. And uh, as is tradition around the globe in many countries today, uh, we are remembering our mothers on Mother's Day. And so to those um, moms, bless you today. And uh, to those who are far away, like my mom, who can't be here in Edmonton, happy Mother's Day, mom. I'm really glad I get to be with her every Sunday morning, at least in this way. You know, Mother's Day isn't always happy for some people. There's sad moments along with it, as well as some happy memories. So I just want to trust that Christ will meet us in the joys and the sorrows that come with remembering our moms or our own mothering in some way. But I do have something special for Mother's Day that I have up my sleeve here. One of the things moms do is set the table, right? They set the table for their family and their friends. Dads do too, and my husband's great at that. But for today, let's say that moms set the table, and we have three women in this church who set the table for us every Sunday, every week. And I want to honor them as mothers at our table and mothers in our community. And that is um, to Irene, who sets the hospitality table for us every week. I have a little gift card for you here. I'll give it to you after. And to Nancy and to Jan, who set the communion table for us every week. Thank you for being mothers to our family. And... Um, so I'll, I'll say those here. You get to go buy your own flowers at Country Gardens. So there you go. And on your way out today, there are flowers, as is tradition here at St. Thomas, for all the women. So just take a, a carnation on your way out. Um, or if you're coming over to the hall, they'll be over there. And you can grab one there, whatever works for you. Just a quick announcement that we had Synod on Friday and Saturday. That is the annual general meeting for our diocese of 63 churches here in the Lower Mainland and uh, around the uh, uh, area. So we had a really good synod. It was really heartfelt. There was a lot of prayer and a lot of discussion and conversation around the table. We looked at something really important and that is what are our priorities in the church and where do we need to put our focus for the next two years. And we came up with 13 beautiful priorities, and then we were asked to narrow it down to five uh, really important um, priorities for the diocese that will um, help guide us as a church in where to put our energies, and they're going to help us. So we'll give a full report later. We're just pulling together our, all the data um, to inform you. It was, But just to let you know, thank you for praying for us as we met and deliberated and worshipped and uh, just had conversation, got to know each other. So thank you for that. We are here now together again. This place is beautiful, sanctuary, and may we truly find sanctuary for our hearts and bodies in this sanctuary today as we are gathered on the unceded ancestral territory of the Stobo people with whom we work and pray for healing and restoration and reparation. And now let us open our hearts um, to what the Spirit has to impart to us today, that we didn't come here um, to not receive. We came to receive. We came to give to each other. Please stay for the brunch after. Uh, if you didn't bring something, please come anyway. There's lots over there. I, I had a peek. So um, just to enter into this space now of love and grace and the fullness of God's presence with us here. Please stand. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May God's grace and peace be with you. May God fill our hearts with joy.
Let us pray. Faithful God, make, make our, our hearts, hearts bold with love for one, one another. Pour out your spirit upon all people so that we may live your justice and sing in praise the new song of your marvelous victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The children are invited to go with Laura and Sophia and Isabella. If you would like to go, that would be great. The splendor of the King And age to 
Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one, from one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. Thanks be to God. Let's read the psalm together responsively. I'll read the fine print and invite you to the bold print. In your might, you rule forever. Your eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against you. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of God's praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life. And will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. 
You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through the fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings. And will pay you my vows. Which I promised with my lips. And spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and, li Come and listen, all you who fear God. And I will tell you what the Lord has done for me. The one to whom I called out with my mouth. And whose praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart. A reading from 1 Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the gradual hymn and the gospel reading. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, 
but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. Then those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After I heard that psalm again this morning, I thought, oh, I should have preached on that psalm. There's some pretty nasty things in there that I think need some attention, but we will save that for another day, or perhaps something in today will address those um, thoughts that the psalmist had in there. I was visiting a woman in her final days in her body. We had visited many times when she wasn't laying down. I had tea in her home. We picked blackberries together. And I remember every Sunday her coming up to my husband for her great big bear hug on Sunday mornings. Kay lived a good and a long life. And she had some suffering like we, we all do in our stories. Kate's body was getting ready to let her go, to be born again into her next life. She was transitioning from one way of living to another way, which is what we celebrate in Easter. Kay slept a lot. One day when she opened her eyes and saw me, she whispered a few words, just six little words. But they weren't just any old words. They were coming from a deeper place in her, her deepest self. She was awake, somewhat aware, and yet I don't know if she was aware of what she was uttering to me that day. St. Catherine of Siena, who lived in the 1300s and is known as a doctor of the church for her nearly 400 letters treaties and prayers that she wrote to unify the church in her day, says, our deepest self is God. This is the image of God within us. For in Christ, we heard we live and move and have our being. Kay's words to me in these final days were not simply ordinary English words to my heart. They were extraordinary. They came from her deepest self, so deep and sacred that I hold that message close to my heart to this day, and I can still hear them and feel them and embrace them. These final words that she was imparting were of utmost importance. I needed to hear and receive them. They changed my life in some way. It was as if Kay had one foot here on earth, and one foot, well, in the other living place, the eternal glory. Part of her was here and part of her was 
in what we call heaven. She was speaking these eternal life words. In this way, God loved me through Kay. And God revealed God's self to me. They were filled with hope and encouragement. I knew I was in her presence, but I recognized that I was also in the presence of another. And whom I call Jesus. I wonder if you've experienced something like this at someone's time of dying. I wonder what their last words might have been to your heart. And maybe you recognize something extraordinary in them. Maybe you notice that God's presence was at hand. And as we think of Mother's Day today, maybe there's a message that your mom gave you when she was alive or just last week if she's still with us. Maybe a smile. Maybe some word of life that she imparted to you. These precious words that we share with one another give life and hope and truth. Today in the text in the Gospel of John, we are reading the first of three farewell messages, discourses of Jesus. Those are the final messages he gave before he ascended from this life to the after. They were after his post-resurrection appearances, so he was already on the other side, but one foot here and one foot there. He was preparing to go back home with God. I think his farewell words must be important, don't you? I think these words must come from his deepest self, from God to us. He shares these few things with his friends. And I noticed three key things that he spoke. If you love me, keep my commandments. You know, as a parent, it's please do what I say to do. Please listen to me and obey how to live. They're not just good ideas. They're directives in how to follow the way of love. And these words can change our hearts and do change our hearts and the world. Another thing he does is he kindly prepares his disciples for a change that's about to happen, that he's going away. How nice of him to give them a little, you know, note. A good parent would do that. I'm just not going to be here for a while, but I'm sending another, an advocate, the spirit of truth. I will not leave you orphaned, but that my Father and I are one. I am in him and he is in us. We cannot be separated even though I'm going away. I live within. The third thing he says in this discourse is that repeating the first one, keep my commandments. It must be important. Please do as I ask as I command, as I direct, for your own wellness and the wellness of the earth. Do what I say for heaven's sake, in a way, because I love you, and in these ways I reveal myself to you. How does Jesus reveal himself to the disciples and to us? Well, let's draw on Paul, who we heard this morning, who sheds light on this for us today. He says that Christ's love is revealed in his suffering and death while on earth. And we read of his resurrection power that takes him to set people free below the earth as well. I love this part of the Easter story on Holy Saturday. He says, Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former days did not obey. 
Christ suffered to bring us to God, to show us who God is and how God is. The cross is not the price that Jesus had to pay to convince God to love us. It is simply where love will lead us to lay down our lives for our friends. Christ, after death, went to the depths beneath the earth and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. I wonder what this reveals about Jesus and the depth of his love to go to these deep places to set people free, not just those he knew and loved. And he still does today go to these deep places in us and in all the earth. He comes to set us free. And I wonder what he proclaimed to them. What would he have said? What did he manifest to those in the chains? How did he reveal himself to them? Maybe something like, you know, once you were dead and now you are made alive because I love you. My love sets you free. I do not leave you orphaned or abandoned. I live in you and you live in me. I am revealing my great love to you, setting you free. In this way, he was living out Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. God has anointed him and set him to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to comfort and provide for those who mourn. He gave them a garland of life instead of the ashes of death. And he still does this today. He was proclaiming, I love you. I have come not only to earth to set all people free, but also under the earth to the underworld to set all free, all imprisoned in darkness and despair to all everywhere. Nothing can keep me away from you. Christ is relentless in this radical love, pursuing, pursuing, pursuing us. The good shepherd who goes after even the last one, lost, everyone. Everyone I know who needs him. Everyone you know needs him. This love understanding of the crucifixion is much better than thinking of Jesus as paying some debt to an alienated God who needs to be appeased into loving us. The Christian way is to love deeply and to keep growing in that, in that deep love and what it actually means to love. I will love them and reveal myself to them, his final words in this discourse. Just prior to Pentecost, which we will be celebrating in two weeks, Jesus reveals his love and reassures his friends that this brief separation will lead to a deeper mystical union and the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So this morning, I invite us to an awareness of Christ's love to us today, to notice and receive Jesus revealing himself to you and to me. I invite you, if you want, to place your hand on your heart. And if you want to, please repeat this little prayer aloud or silently. I am here. I am alive. And there is another who lives within me. His name is Jesus. In him I live and move and have my being. Amen. I am here, I am alive. There is another who lives within us. His name is Jesus.
In him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. Please stand as you're able and join in as we recite the Apostle. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand, sit or kneel, as is your custom for prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, God, that you are as tender as a mother, as well as strong as a father. You give us life and care for us like a mother who will not forsake her children. We pray for our mothers today, putting them into your hands for time and for eternity. We ask your blessing on all our relationships in the families of our homes, our churches, and our communities. Help us all care for them as you care for all your faithful followers. We pray for those in our parish both known to us and unknown, who are sick. We remember especially Irene, Ted, Bev, and Norma. Help us care for them as you care for all your faithful followers. <clears throat> as we stand in your presence in worship, may pride be reduced the good of all become our common aim. Gracious God, we pray for your church, for our Bishop John and our priest Laurie. We pray that we all may learn from one another, as you have loved us, that your church may more and more reflect the unity which is your will and gift. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come to you today on the joyous occasion of Mother's Day to celebrate the gift of motherhood. On this we, day, we're taking a short moment to pray for and appreciate what our mothers have done. They've shown unconditional love, patience, and strength. We give thanks for the special bond between mothers and their children, 
that no distance or time can break. Lord, we ask you to bless them with, with, with your healing grace. May they feel your comfort when they feel let down. Give them strength when she is facing difficult challenges in life and courage when facing uncertainty. Help them to use the obstacles in their path as opportunities for growth. Grant them a sense of peace and reassurance so that they know they're not alone on their journey, but instead can rely on you for what they need. Let them feel loved and appreciated even when faced with doubt or criticism from others by reminding them how deeply you care for their well-being. They mean so much to us, and we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our, our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of the world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you by the power you sustain the universe. Glory to created us to love you with our whole heart and to love each other as ourselves. But we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. give you thanks and praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all people. Glory to you. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus at supper with his friends took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for many and for you, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Glory to you. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Father, you call us to be your servants, 
Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. If, if we have died with him, we shall live with him. If, if we hold firm, we, we shall reign with him. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And all are welcome. Wood rocks cry out to worship, whose glory taught the stars to shine. Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing, but this joy is mine. With the
With a thousand hallelujahs. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever. Beautiful new song, thank you. Worship team. Life giving God, in, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, resurrection you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, so that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Let me bless you this morning out of the fullness 
of Christ. Receive grace upon grace to know how deeply you are loved and how Christ reveals himself to us and to you. May you know the power of the Holy Spirit also to do what is yours to do in the world. In the name of our creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And join us for brunch. I saw quiche and bacon and all kinds of stuff over there. Bless.